contemporary intellectual discourse, uh, certainly in the West, it would be taboo to talk about Islamization. But even in some Muslim countries, that's also taboo. Uh, I don't think you want to talk about Islamization in Indonesia or Tunisia or even Algeria, and certainly not in, in, the, also in, in, in Turkey, maybe not even in Pakistan. I think in, in the Malaysian context, uh, um, we need to keep on working on this narrative of Islamization. And uh, given our, there's no reason for non-Muslims or secularized Muslims uh, to feel threatened uh, by our discourse or our narrative. Because certainly we do not subscribe to the extremist right or left, if uh, or what or what Khaladawi would say. On the one hand, you have the al Zahirun al Judud. Then you have, on the other hand, al Mu'attila al Judud. Uh, so he, he takes the position that we are represent al Wasatiyah, uh, Madrasa al Wasatiyah, and I am. Uh, Alhamdulillah, our Islamization of IUM has uh, been confined to uh, the academic, the intellectual um, uh, <coughs> um, and of course also the Islamization of the self, because Islamization in our context um, uh, has always been twofold. And the two wings of Islamization cannot be <coughs> separated. Islamization of knowledge, Islamization of the self. In fact, Islamization of the self precedes Islamization of knowledge. Because the akhal of the scholar is what produces the intellectual product. And if the akhal is not purified, then the product uh, will be I mean, difficult to, to achieve. The, purification of the product. So the, the Islamic aqal is um, uh, a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the capacity to receive knowledge even directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through ilham, through kash, not through wahi, but through ilham, kash. Wahi is only for, for uh, nubuwa, rusul. Uh, but for us, we can get uh, intuition from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, guidance from Allah. So the the the, the, uh, the aqal uh, is a God-given instrument for bringing about the process of Islamization. Uh, and also since we have not really dabbled into politics, uh, politics in the country, so there's no reason why uh, political or politicians should be concerned about um, or should be threatened with what we're trying to do. We understand now with the uh, new political climate in the country, uh, Islamization is again a bad word. And uh, you can see what happened recently with the idea of, of the khat being part of, of the Malay language. Uh, curriculum or syllabus, uh, huge <coughs> backlash from the uh, Chinese saying this is part of Islamization. So Islamization is a bad word in the Malaysian context with the non-Muslims. But um, if they come to IUM, uh, they will see that Islamization, yeah, uh, uh, it is nothing that they should worry about because we're not out to convert people. Non-Muslims. It's actually to carry out the mission of Iqra, Bismi wa Bikalla bi Khalaq. Then, um, now, I, I uh, interpret the coming of our rector as, as opening up a new horizon, expanding the scope of Islamization, because he brought in the issue of SDGs, 
Sustainable Development Goals, uh, 17 goals. And uh, the more I read about SDGs, the more I uh, analyze it. Yeah, this is this is a good opportunity for us to engage the world because Islamization so far has been sort of within within its own narrow confines. So we have not really gone out of our own silos. Uh, within our university, we talk about architecture, trying to bring in the Islamic perspective. Economics has for a long time also been working on Islamic economics. <coughs> now you're coming up with your own you know, philosophy of Islamic economics. Alhamdulillah. But it is within you know, uh, the confines of, of Muslim uh, Islamic narrative, not really engaging the other. Um, and I thought the SDGs would, would, would force us to engage the world, uh, because SDG is uh, the consensus of 196 nations, uh, including Muslim countries. Malaysia signed it, and, uh, Indonesia, and other Muslim countries, even Saudi Arabia, UAE, Qatar, Kuwait, they all subscribe to SDGs. But these are subscribed by the political leaders. And the uh, Islamic scholars somehow have not been really looking at SDGs, right? Thinking maybe this is something secular and so on. But when you look at it closely, um, SDGs are what uh, world leaders now agree uh, in order, number one, so called to save the planet. This planet Earth is under threat. And also, uh, to prevent uh, uh, or how to overcome future calamities uh, and uh, environmental uh, calamities. But we also have um, economic turmoil, political turmoil. The world is in crisis. Uh, I don't have to repeat that. The Pope has said it many times. And, uh, it's interesting that the SDGs refer to the encyclical of the Pope as one of the important documents, supporting documents. How I wish that they would also use OIC, let's say, uh, declaration as, as another document that would balance the Christian perspective, Catholic and Islamic. But here, the Pope is given a very central uh, profile. Now, one uh, thing that I'd like to share with you, because uh, this is just uh, my muqaddimah, then I'd like to hear from every one of you. Uh, that way I can get more information about what you're doing, especially now I have seen some old faces I'm seeing again, alhamdulillah, from economics, from architecture, also from political science, uh, also from ICT. Huh? ICT. Uh, ICT. And, and light health sciences. And sister from? Good at science. Good at science. KLN. KLN. So these are, alhamdulillah, new faces, but you are the, the future. Right? I belong to the past. Okay? <laughs> so you are the future. So I am happy to see the future here. But let me just share with you on one. You see, uh, you have the SDGs on the one hand, 17 goals. 169 <coughs> targets. Um, then you have Makasid al Sharia. Because Makasid al Sharia uh, has been there before, right? And al Shatibi made it really into a well established discipline, a new discipline. And Ibn Ashur made it even more pertinent to the world. In fact, he added several more mafasids. So uh, the, 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 the focus on mafasid is, is, is very timely and very appropriate. <coughs> timely because you have on the one hand, you have a group of Muslims who um, are passionate with, with the Sharia and they would like to uh, the whole world to, to implement the Sharia, and, uh, uh, and 
and this is creating problems in the Muslim countries as well as, as in the world. And therefore, Sharia becomes another bad word. And sharia is a bad word uh, uh, in, in Europe, certainly in, 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 in France, and of course in America. Uh, they make a big deal of the Sharia. In fact, they would like the word Sharia also to be erased, you know. In England also, although at one time the, the uh, uh, what's his name, the equivalent of the Pope in England, uh, the head of the uh, Anglican Church, what's his name, Archbishop of Canterbury, uh, I think Archbishop Brown, uh, supported the Sharia. Surprisingly, that was about ten years ago. When you say, yeah, well, I think we should, in England, we should allow the, you know, the Muslims to have the Sharia. But that, what he meant was that we should allow them to have their own, let's say, family courts, which have been operating in England for many years. Because you have, on the other hand, you have the, the Jewish uh, courts in England. Why can't you allow the Muslims to have that? So the Archbishop was, was supporting that. But of course, he came under fierce attack. And uh, so what I'm saying is that Sharia has earned a bad name because of the way we, I mean by, by we, I mean uh, the, the extremist elements in, uh, in our community uh, push for Sharia without really um, making people understand what it is. And for instance, why do you have to prioritize who do it? Uh, when, the, when, when uh, the Muslim community is not yet praying five times a day, yeah? and the Muslim community is not paying zakat uh, as, as, as much as we expect. Uh, otherwise, zakat will be one of the ways to alleviate poverty. But we still have you know, high incidence of poverty. So zakat, uh, so in other words, the basics are not yet fulfilled. Then you want to go for you know, the implementation of the hadud. So this, to me, is a question of, that's why Qaradawi came up with this very important book, Fiqh al-Awlawiyyat, <coughs> Understanding Priorities. Fiqh al-Awlawiyyat is understanding priorities. We need to understand priorities. So, so priority is to explain to the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, whenever he uh, prescribes a rule or an injunction, the purpose is always for the maslaha of the people, the, the common good, the welfare, the well-being of people in this world and in the hereafter. Allah does not need uh, for himself. It's about ghani. Is Rani. But human beings uh, need to be uh, guided to gain this, this uh, maslaha or al fala fi dunya wal akhirah. So a sharia is to actually help his uh, preachers uh, to, to have this uh, state of fala in this world and in the hereafter. So our scholars, beginning with Al Ghazali, Rahimahullah, uh, through his ijtihad, came to the conclusion that, um, that behind the, the purpose behind the Sharia is actually to fulfill the maslaha of the people and to avoid a mafsada, to avoid mafsada and to promote maslaha. That is very important. And this, um, then we have also Al Jiwaini later on also uh, expressed the same views. And then a Shati being developed it even further, strengthened it. Uh, and, uh, but it was Ibn Ashur in the 20th century who really gave it a new life. Uh, but after 9 11, then Maqasid became really very, very uh, uh, well uh, presented by the scholars. Because after 9-11, people realized that uh, you, you have 
of course, the, uh, the extremist movement in the Muslim world. Um, of course, some of the uh, phenomenon of, of uh, terrorism uh, are not really the product of Muslims. It could be produced, manufactured uh, by Western by Western, let's say, uh, conspiracies of uh, the Zionist and the American, the CIA, and the you know, Zionist uh, movement have been working together also to manufacture uh, terrorism, you know, uh, according to the timetable, where to do it, and so on. But, but let us not deny the fact that we do have also extremist elements in our midst way before 9-11. You have already Jamaitu Takfir al in Egypt. And one of them killed, uh, what's his name? Sadat. No, after Jamal. Sadat. Sadat. So Sadat was killed by the extremist groups. They were ex Ikhwan, but they felt that the old Ikhwan people are too slow, uh, too, too soft, so they took a hard line uh, at the fear of Right. So we have um, a tataruf among us. Tataruf is extremism. And uh, Qaradawi, may Allah bless his soul, came out with a book, al sahwatul Islamiya, Bayna al-Juhud wa Tataruf. The Renaissance, the Islamic Renaissance, between the uh, what? Jihud? How do you pronounce it, George? Huh? Um, no, but this is uh, but is you know the the uh, no 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 that's that's, that's, that's different Jihud. This one is. Uh, this is, uh, you know, the people who condemn Islam. So, uh, people who uh, criticize Islam, uh, accuse Islam. Yeah. So, between the accusations of the Westerners, what and our own extremists. Right? And in that book, which he wrote, I think, in 78, um, he said, these are the young people. So you have this problem <coughs> after 9-11. So Makasi became very, very important uh, discipline, new discipline. And I think it's good that, that the Makasi is now being revitalized. Because when you apply it to Reading knowledge. None of you are from reading knowledge. No. Yeah. Some reading knowledge. None of you. Okay. That is why in reading knowledge, I have been urging for not Islamization, but relevantization for reading knowledge. <coughs> because uh, what you have in Islamic reading knowledge and uh, uh, religious studies, um, usually, usually, they are so textually bound, they are bound to the text so much that uh, the text becomes sort of sacred, untouchable, you know. So you have to keep on uh, year by year just mastering the text uh, no matter what's happening out there in society. All right? So it's so much text oriented, not, not context oriented. You know? So, nas oriented, not walking oriented. So, um, uh, because of that, the, the um, curriculum of religious studies uh, tend to be rigid, and, uh, and, and some of the old guards or old teachers would be very, very unhappy if you tell them to change things, because it's like challenging them, you know? Because in the religious knowledge um, disciplines, uh, it's not so much the book, it's the chef that is, you know, uh, the master. 
uh, so this chef orient orientation also is a problem. Um, our orientation should be to the truth, to knowledge, to wisdom, and not to the person. But in, in the, our tradition, knowledge, wisdom, and the person have become intertwined and cannot be separated. So if you want to learn faith, you go to Sheikh so and so. And then you have the well established books, you just master them. You go to the, you go to the Madrasa, you go to the Pasantra, you go to the Pondo, this is what you get. Right? So, Alhamdulillah, you get the knowledge, but you cannot see the changes. And, and you do not respond to changes. Or well, the way you respond would be somehow, uh, would be out of, out of tune uh, with, uh, with the present circumstances. Because you're not following the developments in the world. And you're also not responding to that. So that's why for review knowledge in our university, I say your mission is not Islamization, <coughs> because your epistemology is correct. Your epistemology. I mean, in other words, you uh, you are grounded upon revelation. So revelation is is uh, the basis for for review knowledge, and and reason uh, has to be um, allied with revelation. Reason is. Reason complements revelation. Reason is not to challenge revelation. Reason is, is what the, the makhluk is given by God. Revelation is what? Is Allah's knowledge. So the makhluk uh, must be uh, complementing uh, what uh, the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, in the beginning, there was some. Uh, some people are not happy with this um, because they think oh, we also need Islamization. I said, if, if the, the issue of Islamization basically is the issue of epistemology, <coughs> the social sciences, the human sciences, the humanities, social sciences, and the natural sciences are based on, uh, let's say, the epistemology of um, rationalism or empiricism or naturalism, or secular humanism. Right? Whereas in, in, in the Bible knowledge, uh, it is based on Tawheed. So you have the Tawhidic paradigm on the one hand, and then you have the empirical, secular, uh, humanistic uh, paradigm on the other hand. So the, the social sciences, the humanities, and also the natural sciences, uh, they have to to uh, operationalize Islamization uh, by first looking at your uh, epistemology, right? That is uh, the basic philosophical assumptions of your discipline. For review knowledge, the basic philosophical assumptions are no problem. It's okay. But what is not okay? is that they keep that knowledge confined uh, in, in within a certain um, confinement, and that is not engaging the world as the world changes. Okay. Now, for now, what we have with this uh, stress and emphasis on maqasid, people in the knowledge also will think we will have to think about yes. What is the, uh, in what way is my teaching of fiqh, or my teaching of kalam, or my teaching of tasawwuf uh, in the Rehid knowledge actually uh, helping people to, uh, um, to fulfill the hidden uh, hidden deen, okay? What about hidden mal, all right? What about hidden uh, nasal? What about Hivdul uh, uh, Aqal? Yeah. But here, uh, this is where uh, our, our people can, can benefit. 
a lot with the local. So I would like to just share with you how the maqsad, this is maqsad number three, right? Maqsad number one is hifzul ad-deen, hifzul deen. Maqsad number two is hifzul nafs. Maqsad number three is hifzul aqal. Okay. In what way is this maqsad number three going to be uh, another great opportunity for Islamization of human knowledge? Now, if you look at the maqasid, the five maqasid, and of course when I say five, that's not mean the maqasid is confined to five. In fact, you can add on and see them as what you add on as elaborations of the five. Okay? For instance, how about preservation of environment? It's not in the maqas, it's not stated there. But you link it as a branch of is a, a nafs preservation of human life. So the environment is very important so, uh, for, the, for the sustainability of human life. Okay, so if you use the word hib, uh, instead of saying protection, preservation, you use it sustainability of aqal, or sustainability of life, then in what way is your discipline promoting that? Is it in what way is, let's say, um, fiqh, yeah, the study of fiqh? Uh, in, in what way is the study of Islamic jurisprudence uh, helping to uh, happen the sustainability of, of life? Or of of a lineage that is family, yeah, uh, <coughs> and of man, uh, the economy, yeah, finance, economy, and, and all that. So uh, when it comes to hevel akal, literally you translate it as protection. Um, preservation <coughs> of the intellect and uh, the way the scholars of the past explain it uh, <coughs> uh, they took this uh, or they, they deduced this uh, concept of Hidl al-Aqal from the prohibition against Khamar in the Quran because if you take Khamar, or you take something that is uh, intoxicant, this will affect your mind, and that um, then you are not able to worship Allah in the proper way. So the protection of the mind from toxic substances is the reason for the prohibition of Khamar. And so from there they deduce uh, the concept of Preserving, protecting the aqal, hifzul aqal. Right. Now, how do we see hifzul aqal from a broader perspective? And here I like to mention how Sherman Jackson, Dr. Sherman Jackson, a um, very important American scholar of Islam, Sherman Jackson. Uh, he's Afro American studied in Al-Azhar, mastered the Arabic language. Um, I think he went into fiqh, but uh, his scholarship extends to other branches of Islamic knowledge. Young, up-and-coming scholar. So he's, he said that this, uh, you, like it, uh, you, can, you can understand Hibz al-Aqal in the context of, uh, of uh, preserving the the proper function of, of your aqal as Allah has intended it. In other words, uh, the knowledge that you are producing from your aqal has to be in line with Allah's objectives and the purpose that Allah has created human beings. In other words, you cannot just use your aqal uh, any way you like. Number one, it is an amana from Allah. You don't own your aqal. Yeah. Reason, intellect, 
is a gift from Allah. It is an amana. And therefore it has to be produced, uh, to be used in the proper way. So to me, what you are doing, and you are the coordinators of Islamization in the Kulyas, what you have been doing is a way of expanding Hifzul Aqal. But, but what you have been doing so far, um, you say that this is, this is the mission of IIUM. All right? But now the mission of IIUM, of course, is grounded in Iqra, Bismillah, the Khalaq. But uh, it can be better appreciated if you say that it is actually based on one of the maqasid, a sharia. So what you are, <coughs> you are in uh, with, uh, what? Engineering. Engineering, yeah? Uh, okay, you are in engineering. So uh, engineering has been concerned about ethics in engineering, not so much talking about Islamization of engineering. Okay, for good reasons, because your, your um, uh, engineering products are uh, not really an issue. Unless, of course, you produce a technology which is really uh, harmful for mankind, like the atomic bomb or the hydrogen bomb, uh, which killed thousands of people. And I think many of the scientists regretted creating that bomb. Uh, so your, you have, your kulia has always been talking about emphasizing ethics. In the, uh, so again, Ethics as part of, of technology is another aspect of hifzul aqal, right? You, this is preserving, not just preserving, but developing. So you have to bring in the concept of developing the, the mind, not just protecting, preserving. Yeah? Protect, preserve, but this one is let it grow. So, developing the mind, so developing the intellect in the proper way <coughs> is uh, Islamization of knowledge, of human knowledge. So, I just would like to share with you today, for the first time I'm sharing with you, um, that uh, we have now uh, another foundation another philosophical foundation or another philosophical justification for Islamization of human knowledge. The old justification is based on iqra, bismillah, based on uh, the fact that Western knowledge has been founded on a secular philosophical basis, whereas the Islamic uh, knowledge is grounded upon Tawheed, all right? Because, because Allah is the one, al Ali. Allah is the one, the all-knowing. And our ilm is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْحَى So you have Iqra, you have then عَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْحَى Allah taught. So what we know is by virtue of what Allah has given. So we have to use the aqal uh, in the right way. Uh, but the West, um, based on the secular humanistic uh, philosophical foundation, uh, releases the aqal from any kind of transcendental control or supervision. So the Aqal became completely free. This is called, this is what Hans Kuhn, uh, the great um, theologian, Hans Kuhn, called the absolutized the intellect. The intellect has been absolutized. So the intellect becomes the absolute yardstick for what is good, what is bad. You don't need anything more than the intellect. In Islam, the intellect is a means for furthering knowledge, but the intellect 
is grounded upon uh, divine knowledge. And the intellect is the intellect of the ant, which recognizes the knowledge, the power, the wisdom of Al Khaliq, the Creator. In, uh, in the West, uh, there's no concept of the Creator. You are the creators of knowledge. Okay. And so, the, for the West, knowledge is socially constructed. Knowledge is a social product. Halas, that's it. Even religious knowledge, whatever knowledge is socially constructed. Science is also socially constructed. Now, while we agree that it's so in the case of, uh, of the uh, Western knowledge, um, we do not agree that uh, the intellect is the only means of uh, producing knowledge. The intellect, wahyu, uh, wahi, the uh, revelation of Allah, is the larger and the most authoritative source of knowledge. Uh, and Allah has given that uh, to human beings and not to other creatures. So, um, uh, brothers and uh, sisters, uh, in your, when you go back to the Kulia, uh, perhaps um, you may want to share with, with them that, um, that uh, the righteous uh, um, concern with the SDGs uh, is a blessing in disguise. It's not, it's not really uh, putting us, uh, I mean, to go back, you know, or putting us backward, or sidelining Islamization, right? or marginalizing Islamization. Uh, I say that because <coughs> it does not disturb Islamization. You, you carry on with Islamization, but you cannot expect him to be articulating Islamization because he's never done that. In his career as a vice chancellor of USM for many years, he made USM really great, making it an apex university. So his audience has always been a mixed militant audience. Whereas here in IIUM, our audience is an Islamic audience with a mission, because this is an Islamic university. USM is a militant national university, serving militias' needs, multicultural, <coughs> multi-ethnic, multi-religious. So if you were to talk about Islamization in that context, he would be seen as not respecting the other non-Muslims in this university. In fact, USM also became great because there are so many non-Muslim uh, professionals, scholars, engineers, scientists, doctors, producing great works of uh, research. So he, he's coming from that background. So if you were to talk Islamization, it might sound a little bit, you know, uh, odd, uh, because that has not been his 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 concern. Uh, so he is very comfortable with with sustainability, because he has been doing this in USM, and then USIM. I, I think when he went to USIM, I think he also brought this to USIM. Uh, so I see it as a blessing in disguise, <coughs> because um, if, if not for this, I see this as a, as a welcoming, uh, not to say storm, but uh, you know, a strong wind coming, uh, which will shake us a little bit. <coughs> Otherwise, we'll still be you know, uh, in, each, uh, in in the silos, and then to, uh, in our own comfort zone our own comfort zone. Here comes someone from outside using a different language. But the purpose is the maslaha of the university, maslaha of the ummah, maslaha. For Zul, it is maslaha of humanity. 
his target is humanity, and he has been engaging humanity. Not just now, because Zul has gone out of the Malaysian confines, uh, Malaysian narrative. He, he has been uh, chairman of the World uh, Association of Universities, president for several years now, he's no longer the president. So uh, he has been um, catapulted into this global uh, educational mission. So he has to speak the language of the United Nations. And SDG is a language of the United Nations. But it is a language that refers to a, a common problem in the world today, which is a world in crisis. And you, have, you see the political crisis, you see the economic crisis, and we are going to see more and more environmental crisis. And now scientists are frantically searching for ways to make sure that our Earth is not going to get hotter uh, by 2050 uh, if we reach the 2.2% uh, uh, Celsius, uh, then we will be in trouble. Not only animals will, will die, human beings also might not survive. And uh, now you have another, uh, another discourse coming in this Anthropocene, Anthropocene, uh, claiming that now we are about to enter the sixth um, critical period in the history of, of, of the world, the sixth. There was a time when, when dinosaurs were, were you know, destroyed because of this cataclysmic event happening on the earth. And we are now entering the sixth one. Um, and uh, 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 let me share also with you, very interestingly, no, but he's serious about it. Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking says that this earth cannot sustain the economic growth uh, because the carrying capacity of the earth is so much. But already we are keep going beyond the carrying capacity of the earth. So it's bound to give, give in. In other words, the earth will not survive. So what is he suggesting? What is Hawking suggesting? We need to survive another one million years. One million years. One million. But we have to look for other planets. Now, if I were to say this, people would be laughing at me and maybe throwing the shoes in my face. But coming from Stephen Hawking, they listen with respect. Because here is a great scientist, theoretical, no doubt, uh, theoretical physics. Uh, telling that uh, the world cannot sustain, the earth is going to uh, blow up uh, and we are going to die, but before we die, at least look for some uh, planets, nearby planets, where we can go and then develop another civilization plan. Never thinking of death, and certainly not Akhirah also. So the world view does not include Akhirah, and the world view is also thinking that and he said so. Science, uh, I mean, philosophy is dead. Dead in the West, but not dead in the East. You have uh, Chinese philosophy, Japanese philosophy, and you have Islamic philosophy. And how is Islamic philosophy not thriving? Is the maqasid. The maqasid is a philosophy of Islamic law. And one of the scholars mentioned this, this uh, maqasid is uh, Ayatul al qariyah uh, this is one of the signs of 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 Abkhariya. Uh, Abkhariya. Genius. Okay. Uh, one of the signs of the genius of the Islamic mind. Signs of the genius of Islamic ishtihad. Because this is the ishtihad of Ghazali, developed by a Shatibi developed by, later on, by Ibn Ashur, and then now, Faradaw, Rai Sunni, Jasir Aounda. And who else? Many others. Yeah. 
Bayer. Ben Bayer also, okay, Ben Bayer. In the West, you have Tariq Ramadan. So Tariq Ramadan added uh, another 20 or more maqasids. Qaradawi also added some more. But the basic, the core maqasid remains five, and the others are just uh, uh, branches of the five. So uh, this is uh, my uh, message to you today. How do we make use of one maqsad, one objective, which is hifdul aqal, as another philosophical, religious justification for Islamization of human knowledge. Of course, Islamization of the self, there's enough justification. Right? Enough justification. Allah says, وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا سَوَّاهَا فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ سَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا So, the nafs must be cleaned. The qalb must be cleaned. You have the dua of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam asking Allah, وَلَا تُخْزِنِي يَوْمَ يُبْعَثُونَ Oh Allah, please do not put me to shame on the day when I, when all human beings will be raised up again. On the day when, uh, when there is no benefit, your wealth or your children uh, is not giving any benefit, uh, except those who return to Allah, those who return to Allah with a sound heart. So for Islamization of the self, we need not worry about more justifications. It's just that, are we doing it? There's so much of, um, uh, so much of temptation in the world. The zinatul hayati dunya, the mata'ul guru, uh, and also the al um, hayatu dunya itself. Know, is, is, is a problem for, for many Muslims and they can be carried away by that. So that's why I'm not talking about Islamization of the self, but I'm telling you because I wanted to not to forget that these are the two wings uh, which must always be together. The Aslamatul Nafs and Aslamatul Aqa. Okay, so I stop there. I would like to uh, open this discussion. Uh, I would like to listen to you, and you can even disagree with me, so please don't worry. You can say, Prof. Kama, <coughs> what you said for the last one hour <coughs> is nonsense. Uh, I no problem with me. No problem. Well, I no problem. <coughs> I would like to hear the other view and benefit from your view. Okay, so I'm just taking advantage of my age, that's all. Not my knowledge, my age. I am at least maybe 30 years older than many of you, or some, maybe 40 years older. Yeah. I'm 77. So you are? 40. 40, so I, uh, you can be my son. Uh, Sheikh is my brother. <laughs> 51. Huh? Huh? 51. 51, yeah. Well, brother, la, 51. <laughs> Although if I married early, you could be my son also. <laughs> but I married late. I married at the age of 30. If I married at 25, you would be my son. <laughs> Your age? 34. 34? Yeah, <laughs> Your son? 44. 44, Anna. Forty-six. Huh? Forty-six. Forty-six. I'm not a Jew. Ah, ni ni chu chu. Thirty-nine. Thirty-nine. Ah, chu. Ah, I'm not lah. Why not chu chu? Chu chu. Thirty. Ah, chu chu. Chu chu. I'm uh nice. Forty-five. Forty-five. I'm not. Ah, chu chu chu. What's your age? Twenty-four. Ah, chu chu. Grandchild. 
So I have two grandchildren here. <laughs> so I take advantage of my age, you know, to speak. But now, I really need to learn from you. Wallahi, I need, really need to learn. Because you are the people, you are engaging the disciplines. You are in the kulia. You know the problems. I have left uh, administration for the last two and a half years. And even when I was uh, you know, at East Tag and all that, I was confined to. But I did not really know what's happening on the ground, what are the challenges you're facing, and how to move forward, and so on. So please, it's, it's open for discussion. We have another one hour, right? Yeah, we have another one hour. Until 12, inshallah. Okay, please feel free. Yes, please. Yeah, could, could you also mention your name because I yeah. think some of them may not know you. Okay, I'm uh, Dr. Muhammad Yusuf from Gulia Alliance Sciences from Quantum Campus. Dr. Muhammad Yusuf? Yes, from Gulia By the way, he is a, his first degree, master's, and PhD all from IIM. So this is a great product. <laughs> And I have sciences. Yeah. So I was appointed as IHQ coordinator starting from this year. So I um, actually just would like to apologize for because the first meeting was mentioned to us in the early January, if I'm mistaken. And it was mentioned to us that it was going to be a VC in Kwantan, video conference. Mm -hmm. But at that time, suddenly, due to some technical errors, they, they cancelled it and they didn't inform us for other meeting. Mm -hmm. So that's why we consider this for me, as, uh, especially as the first meeting. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, in, with regards to the Islamization of knowledge in our Kulia, because we are looking at different angles, we did some survey to all of the staff, 117 staff among us. So, uh, beside the philosophical foundation that you mentioned just now, mm -hmm. we try to make it more grounded to the staff. And because we are, there are many concerns, when we sit our, our Kulia, we have to recall it as the cast members. Cast members means the staff and the student as well. How, how do you spell KAS? KAS, K-H-S, Kulia of Alliance. Oh! Yeah, so we make it like KAS maybe. So, so usually... Um, I thought it is C-A-S-T-E. <laughs> so our KAS members usually we, we comprise our staff and uh, students. So okay. the idea we try to make it go back to our foundations because uh, I think our foundations can suit for all. That's the idea that we try to engage for particularly these two years. So what we do, we try um, going back to basics. And our focus, the first focus is to have um, enhancement of adab. That is why we are having a weekly classes of adab and mufrat. We have some stars. We are involving the... Adab and mufrat, by the way, is Imam Bukhari's. And Bukhari's another collection of hadith. It's called Adab and mufrat. You know, of course, uh, the Sahih Bukhari is, is well known, but his Adab al Mufra is very important also. Good. So, we, we are trying to see a different angle, in, uh, first in terms of knowledge, spiritual enhancement, that was covered by classes and lectures. Another part we are looking of Amal, Amal something like uh, asking uh, and motivating the staff to do donations. In our Kulia, we have some, we call it some mic. My gift, my special gift to the students. So we are asking the staff, requesting them to do donations to help the poor. And inshallah, we are planning to have a collaboration with students to have a massive donation program, which means we are asking the NGOs to come to tell their problems and the difficulties they are having, and asking the staff actually to do some donations. And thirdly, we are having we are uh, planning for our own Kulia Humility Day. <coughs> humility in the Humility Day. Actually nowadays, Alhamdulillah, when we plan this, but with the new rector, they are having it already. So it's actually two in one, actually fulfilling the purposes. <coughs> which means some staff are involved in cleaning and everything to Humility Day. So that one is in terms of the spiritual part and other things. And as well, we are thinking about the students as well. That is why we are like our Kula IOHK, some programs we are inviting the students as well. Uh, collaboration with students. So that, for example, we done the IFTAR program last time. Mm -hmm. if the, this is the first time IFTAR involving more than 300 students. We are start doing things, we have IFTAR together. During Ramadan? Yes, because oh. this year Ramadan the students are there. Oh. Usually students are not there, they will, because it's during the semester mm -hmm. break. So during our time, Alhamdulillah, we managed to get the students and ask them to come and have an uh, uh, in between them between departments so that we know each other. That's the, the idea from the basic foundation. But there are some issues. Mm. Issues in terms, number one, is that 
when we try to make, uh, for example, you want to expand the knowledge in terms of philosophical background you mentioned just now, mm -hmm. like chairs and everything, mm -hmm. but the participation by the pool members, mm -hmm. right? For example, we invite scholars and we teach lecture. Mm -hmm. There are many among the staff themselves not really keen on this. Mm -hmm. They are saying this, like, this is something like philosophy, mm -hmm. not really grounded, and we are not part of it. Mm -hmm. And when I did survey, for example, they like a basic program. For example, they want Janaza management, oh. they want marriage course, oh. not marriage course, parenting course. Oh. Parenting courses, they want like, even to the extent of Tajud courses. Mm. Because they even staff, uh, like, not uh, non economic, I mean like uh, the technical stuff, mm -hmm. so they, they are like, they want a basic one. Mm. I'm not sure, maybe because we didn't uh, really go in depth for the survey, we just want to see what kind of things that they want mm. for the betterment of the program. So sometimes when, uh, we need to cater that the problem is that to have a program that can suit the most. Sometimes we, that's why what, what we are, our solution is that to offer a different program. For example, we can have the monthly, monthly talks, yeah. which is the academicians will come and give lecture and etc. Et et but the technical staff may not be attending because they say this is not for me. So when we have a lecture that cater for the technical staff, then some academicians say no, it's yeah. not for me because they think this is it. So that's the challenge number one. Uh, second, uh, second thing is that uh, we are targeting also for spiritual enhancement. I just forgot to mention this. That we like we have a campaign. We try to uh, ask uh, staff to have like the the to 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 make zikir. For example, we are trying to produce a small booklet to ask for the staff, uh, technical staff, to make a lot of zikir to go for purification of heart. Authentic secret morning and evening, some stuff you know, not, may not know what kind of authentic secret they can do every day for the religion. Because we really believe in the heart's changes, and we believe one of the ways was to to make the heart changes better, to, to work of the Muslim, especially in work professions, ethics, etc. We are targeting for that as well for this particular genre of uh, Islamization. And we have Ibadah Camp usually, Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Our Ibadah Camp, we try to diversify, put in some other elements involving the Okhua between the staff and students. Mm -hmm. But sure, budget is a concern. Mm -hmm. That's why we, we, uh, we are asking for some donation, even among the staff. But uh, the other small things that I'm suggesting, especially for one time camp, I'm not sure in Goma as well, I think. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of visitors, the non Muslim visitors mm -hmm. that come. For example, the yeah, model number four, not mistaken, is Dawah in the module. In the da'wah, we have programs, we have talk, da'wah, and contemporary talks, etc, etc. But sometimes, even we have non-Muslims. You mentioned the module. Yeah. Who is providing this module? The Ibadaka module is by the mosque. Oh, the mosque? Yes. In the website, they have the module. Oh. And number, a different plan may use a different module. We like, I think, some of are using number six, number five, depending on the starting point. Uh -huh. So, like uh, last year, we did, uh, we asked certain things. People who are engaging in da'wah to oh. give um, uh, lectures. But usually the module is mostly on lectures. So we diversify oh. our module. That's why my suggestion as well for Islamization uh, of knowledge of IHK to diversify the, pro the programs not only on talks and lectures because not all really like talks. Right? Mm -hmm. But uh, my suggestion is that, uh, for example, centuries or most may provide some a small budget to provide a kit, a small kit, mm -hmm. like a gift. So that when we have visitors, non Muslim visitors, mm -hmm. usually in contact campus we have many because the suppliers, the companies are coming for workshops. Mm -hmm. So they come to our university, Islamic mm -hmm. University, yeah. they just know about the dress code. Uh -huh. They enter to the university, yeah, they give yeah. workshops, they go away. Mm -hmm. Of course, we treat them, that's part of the da'wah we have. Mm -hmm. We treat them well, give them food, everything. But at least they are something that they can have a special key, a small um, questions about Islam, possible uh, issues about Islam or even the Quran, Quran translation, a small kit, so that to give to them, so that they come up from UAE, at least they have something. But to do this, well, yeah. No, yeah. no um, this kind of uh, brochures for non-Muslims, but Kim has a lot. Yeah. Adim also has. Uh, I don't know who else will have this, so we, we do not have to, you know, yeah. wait, Make we just take from them, yes. from Adim and put Kim. Maybe some other organizations, I don't know. So something that we can think about, something, something that, yeah. so that... But they are in uh, English. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in the uh, Masjid Nagara, and also Masjid Basi, 
uh, Uttarajaya, uh, they have all these uh, you know, uh, different languages catering for the for the tourists. So we have our this is a great opportunity for Tawa. Sometimes yeah. they come to Okula and then maybe they come only once in a year or something. And maybe it's, it's sometimes it's a bit difficult for us to explain. At least they have some kit to go back and yeah. their friends and they can Very go good, sure. Because sometimes they come to uni Islam universities, yeah. like even for our lectures. Mm -hmm. They are staying in our, our, our universities mm -hmm. with a lot of problems and department and everything. Mm -hmm. They never know anything about Islam. Mm -hmm. They see our attitude yeah, yeah. going in camp further from Islam. But at least they have something that to read. Mm -hmm. Maybe because of that can change their mind. True. So, uh, in brief, our... They are Muslim Chinese? Yeah, we have our Arab Chinese lectures. Even they attend it by camp. The, the, the yeah. translation of the Quran in Chinese would be another good yeah. thing to uh, Even in Kuli of Science as well, right? That's where I can be at the lecture, non-Muslim lectures coming to the lecture. Just to listen? To just to listen, because it's part of the home, oh, right? Yes. So yes. just come, come to listen. Mm -hmm. So sometimes um, I see this is opportunity for HK at least to mm -hmm. engage in these things. Sometimes right. we are focusing a lot of foundational ideas and everything that's only can be understood during lectures. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's good. That's a thing that we should go and further make a lot of lectures, make uh, the academician understand, mm -hmm. correcting their ideas, giving more ideas. But at the same time, it's more groundwork, yeah. so that the staff and the people uh, really understand. And I think one particular field that all can agree is Adam. Akidah may have differences. People are fighting each other issues of Akidah. Mm -hmm. But in terms of Adam, I think a lot yeah. of we can agree on Adam. Mm -hmm. sure. Right? Something. Like, the only thing is how to manage it. Maybe some classes, some programs, something like that. So th this is my uh, simple uh, suggestion on issues and changes. Maybe um, Prof. can suggest to us that how we actually try to accommodate as many as possible in doing our programs, putting aside but okay, maybe other things. Thank you very much, Doctor, for very good, uh, very enlightening. Uh, this is for me the first time I am hearing about uh, the uh, non-intellectual dimension of Islamization, which is really um, grounded in, in the social work, in da'wah bilhan, and also in adab. So this is a very good part of, of Islamization of the self. But also, it's an Islamization of knowledge translated into adab, translated into da'wah, translated into a concrete action for social upliftment. I'm sure you work also with Oram Asli. Um, in Kuantan, there are certain, <coughs> under certain flagships, they are doing oh, okay. uh, some with Oram yeah. Asli. Yeah, okay, good. So I, this is uh, the idea of uh, da'wah for the non-Muslims. This is a good idea. In fact, before the hospital came up, uh, I was invited by, by our brothers in Kuantan, and uh, I urged them to, to make this hospital uh, another gateway to Islam. Yes. Uh, through your, again, through your adab, how you welcome non-Muslims, uh, how you present the cleanliness of Islam, not the cleanliness of Muslims. Muslims are not known to be very clean, but Islam is a very clean religion. And the Japanese are the best in this regard. Um, so, I uh, so the culture, because uh, you have a new hospital, you can start a new culture. You do not have to continue the old culture. The old culture is a mix of Malay culture, uh, not doing things, you know, uh, to the best of your ability. Cukup makan, Malay culture. <laughs> and then um, uh, you know, uh, not really treating the non-Muslims well, uh, and uh, high tolerance for uh, um, laxity, taking things lightly, not serious. Uh, so uh, and and. Um, and, and doctors will be under great stress. Uh, and so how can we make doctors and nurses feel this is, this is the amal saleh, this is the ibadah. The more stress you get, the more thawab you get from Allah subhanahu uh, So that is no longer a source of stress, 
is a source of barakah from Allah. And it's a source of sadaqah for the doctor who doesn't have enough money, but you know, going out to help a patient is his sadaqah. So I was talking in that line, hoping that our hospital would be you know, a place where people come to the hospital, they live as a Muslim. They come in as a non-Muslim, but they live as a Muslim. That is very ideal. So uh, what you're doing in the allied sciences is, is really translating Islam into a hospitable Islamic environment. So that's good. OK, another, any other comments? Yes, please. Sorry. Please introduce yourself. Uh, my name is uh, Mohamed Mahiri, and I'm from the Korea of Economics. Mohamed Mahiri. You can call me Mahiri. Okay. Uh, Dr. Mahiri has been coordinator for what? 10 years? Uh, something like that. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> so he is a pillar. <laughs> the pi one of the pillars of the Korea of Economics. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he says that I'm the pillar, then I must say he's, he's the bedrock because basically he's, I've been contacting him to fill up the program. So basically, <laughs> whatever pillar I am is because of the base. <laughs> uh, uh, so um, I'm sorry to play uh, the role of uh, devil's advocate. Here. Okay, no problem. Uh, with the hope that I'm. This is really not a shatanic uh, was was uh, in, in no two problem. essence. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> um, one of the concerns that you raised, I want to actually connect between what he has said and also your points made earlier. Uh, one of the stigma against Islamization effort is actually the fact that it's seen as if we are trying to proselytize people. And uh, the last point made by him uh, about giving gifts and you connect it with uh, the literature or pamphlets with, uh, from Abim mm -hmm. and from uh, Islamic outreach Abim, mm -hmm. uh, from Perkim. Somehow I don't think it's to the favour of Islamization project because to me it, it reinforces the stigma. Uh, see. You see? Okay. But, but uh, having said that, I think mm -hmm. um, we have to use the indirect means rather than the means okay. and the direct means. Because is the direct means that is actually reinforcing the stigma. Okay. So why are we using the same tool when we know it comes back to the same result? So my point being, perhaps we have other means, i.e. all these uh, controversial issues with Islam, mm. like Islam and terrorism. That one is a subtle way of doing uh, dawah, rather than giving uh, mm. Quran in mm. translation. Mm. I mean, all that is good. Mm. I'm not saying that it's wrong, it's okay. bad. It's just it's, it's a matter of strategy and okay. refinement of strategy. All right. Right? Mm. So that is something that you can do. And uh, perhaps, well, Doggy's idea is very simple. You know, you give a bookmark with a simple quotation from Quran that is practical for them to actually use it in real life as soon as they go back and want to read and things like that is more meaningful to me because it has that uh, practical value in whatever you give and at the same time things are done I mean the dakwah is done by before right? so these are the kind of things that I think uh, we have it's not as a as this we have to be more refined in our approach so that we will not be reinforcing the bull stigma that's very good point Another point? Do you have anything else? Well, I, mean, I have lots, about, lots of questions. You know, something about the, 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 uh, the state of uh, Islamization in the, in the Kuliyat now. Oh, okay. where, where are you in the Kuliyat now? Is everybody on board? Or there's still some people still left out? Okay. So. Um, the same, it seems like we have surpassed the need for philosophical mm -hmm. uh, uh, focus. Mm -hmm. Having said that, that is something that I don't like. I mean, I love the philosophical focus. Okay. 
in that sense, uh, it makes the life as instrumentation coordinator more difficult. Lah. Because you have your own in inclination and uh, the rest seems to have their yeah, mind. So in that sense, um, that's the challenge uh, there. Eh? Um, so their intent is to see more things that are practical. They want to see uh, perhaps uh, that day I was with the Dean and he was asking us to try and show some Thing in terms of actual actions, you know, uh, things like cleanliness, things like uh, proper ada. All these are mm. goes back to the fundamental uh, issue mm. of uh, ada. Mm. So there it seems to be uh, reinforcement. In fact, yesterday we have this kula uh, meeting, and the dean was asking us to go back to kita you know. Uh, so. It is a question of trying to uh, focus more on the foundations again, in the sense of it being different from the way we uh, give the foundation of Islamization. Okay. So it's more of a foundation of Islam. But why is he suggesting kitab kuni? So, yeah, he's trying to see it as a avenue for people to gather and try to reinforce the question of Ukwa. I think that seems to be the... As you know, the further away or the more we have individualized KPI, then the soul need to be put back together so that the sense of community oh, is coming back to the picture. Oh. That is something that we felt. I mean, yes, all this... Uh, KPIs and uh, all this search for glory over publication <laughs> and, and, and FRGS uh, and uh, it seems to have uh, some side effects mm -hmm. that side effect is the, uh, the sense of togetherness mm -hmm. it's missing, it's missing. Okay. in fact, uh, again, yes, yesterday this what happened, everything happened <laughs> uh, a cool a department took an initiative to just a durian uh, feast. Oh. Yeah. That is my department. Lah. But oh. not, not my idea, somebody else's. But you go No, just durian kampung. Lah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe at the Kulia level, we go and do something. <laughs> department level, we just go and do something. One something for me. Lah. <laughs> so, yeah. This, this kind of events uh, are uh, needed, it seems. Uh, more relaxed, more... Unofficial kind of uh, okay. setting, right. so that is something that is uh, the feel on the ground about what it's needed, what is need to be done in the kuliah. Okay. Uh, so we focus on the self uh, more than on the content. Of the because the way, because to me, um, economics is one of the pillars of sustainability, mm. and uh, Islamic economics is the future. Uh, capitalism cannot survive for too long. Already it is collapsing. Uh, and of course, uh, people are talking of uh, socialist uh, ecosystem uh, or socialist ecology, not socialism, but in terms of preservation of, of the ecology, and maybe this socialist uh, ideas could. But here again, you're going back to the old ideological struggle between capitalism and socialism. Islam has its own approach to nature uh, and we don't have to go back to the socialist model or the capitalist model because uh, the relationship between man and nature is very unique in Islam uh, and that needs to be highlighted uh, and I see, the way I see it in the forward 2050 and beyond, Islamic economics is the mainstream model. Uh, now, of course, it's being uh, tested. Some people are having, you know, testing it um, in Islamic finance, right, banking and all that. But the time will come when uh, the evil of usury uh, it will be accepted by everybody, and the capitalist model will be rejected. 
uh, and this is a time when the Islamic alternative comes in. So you have the philosophical grounding now, with uh, you know you're working out the philosophy of, of Islamic um, economics, um, and then the institutions. Already some institutions are coming up, and later on, I'm sure Indonesia will go in a big way now. And after 2050, I think many Indonesian banks will be all Islamic. So the Islamic model is the future, and that's why I would like to know where you are now. So apparently, Alhamdulillah, you have moved up the ladder, right? So it's, then you can have the luxury of eating durian also, because you have done, you know, your, the basic things are okay, so you can celebrate. But uh, I was just thinking, those ones who have just joined in, uh, are they coming with still the old, the old baggage of the conventional, and so they need to be also uh, they need to undergo the intellectual and the spiritual tarbiya mm -hmm. that you have been doing uh, in the Korea. Okay. Okay. Next, uh, anybody else, uh, Dr. Daniel? Uh, okay. uh, long time uh, <laughs> since we last met. Uh, professor, uh, I'm still teaching at Political Science Department. You are, huh? but um, now I'm actually a full full time staff of this time. Full time now? Yes. Oh, what are you teaching um, this time? Um, actually, now I'm in charge of the flagship project. Which is um, what flagship? The flagship is under SDG 16, which is uh, 16. Peace building and civilizational development. On Monday, the Home Minister was here. Uh, and he spoke about the uh, National Action Plan in preventing and countering violent extremism. Mm -hmm. uh, so it really was a successful um, seminar. And um, what happened uh, afterwards was that the Ministry of Youth and Sports, uh, they contacted us. And um, they're looking at um, IUM and ISTAC to uh, devise a program package for Malaysian youth oh, on ECBE. So we'll start with a pilot. Hopefully we can do it by the end of this year and then we'll try to implement so, it. Doctor Dan, you're now yes. representing ISTEC, right? You're coming here. Yes. Representing is not political science. No. Oh, okay, good, thank you. Uh, so um, hopefully we can do a nationwide program for twenty twenty. So that's the plan. Uh, so as you may know, um, the team itself has expanded. Um, what is the team? The the team. Oh. Um, as in the Extremism Analytical Research Unit. Uh, Ahmad and Mohammadi is in the same team. Uh, we have also expanded to include Professor Apis, the current deputy director, okay. as, and also the, the former deputy director of research, uh, Professor Mohammadi. Oh, so okay. We're looking at his um, uh, research unit uh, when it comes to target segmentation uh, on online users uh, and whether they go to extremist websites and, and so on. Um, so I think. Uh, Based on what you described just now, yes, definitely this is an opportunity for us to I think, expand and include Islamization as perhaps part of the module, part of the curriculum that we, we might want to introduce at the national level for Malaysian National youth, level, no? for, Especially for Muslim youth, um, directly but or in You have to get Saeed Sadiq first to, to buy in yeah. the idea. The budget is already there. Oh, budget. Uh, I think the budget is about 250k for the pilot um, and um, it's up to one million for the national implementation. I'll be meeting with the Ministry of Youth and Sports on the 13th after I come back from China. So, has I suddenly come here after after becoming minister? Has no, I haven't. I'm liaising with somebody in the KSU yeah. office. Oh, once. Yes, he did. For did he come? For debate. For debate. Oh, for for debate. debate. Of course, he's a debater. <laughs> So after this initial meeting on the 13th, I will definitely follow up with you about okay. how we can incorporate this. That's good. Uh, that's very good. If you meet the minister, please convey my salam to him. I will. Uh, tell him stop debating, not help <laughs> 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 uh, well, Because I, I, I feel a bit, you know, I, I think he wanted to be a politician when he said, when he's when he came up with the idea that Sakir Naik should be sent home and all that. You know? mm -hmm. I said, uh, Sadiq, are you going to be a you know, politician or what? Mm -hmm. 
because I didn't think he gave enough thought to it, but now I think he has cooled down. I think accepted the PM's solution, which I think is the best. Not to send send him home, because there's no home for him. India is with Modi there. It's dead against Muslims. He is really an extremist Hindu, and they want to to make uh, Kashmir another Gaza. Uh, so um, it's not not wise to send him home. But tell him to keep his mouth shut or be careful with his words. <coughs> tell him he was a bit liberal with his words. Mm -hmm. you know, I think that's his mistake. But otherwise, we appreciate the fact that many people converted to Islam through him. Although I may not agree with his methods, but uh, as, as a guest in the country, we should be very careful, especially with his words. Uh, we are a state doctor in, in Malaysia now. The, the racial polarization is so 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 uh, yeah, so so strong and uh, very deep, and it's, I do not know when we can really bring people back together. And so, um, Zakir Naik's statement uh, can ignite the, um, the racial tension yeah. and make things worse. So, uh, but you know, our minister is young, and uh, so I was thinking when he said that, is he trying to, you know, trying to become popular? You know, the non-Muslims will accept him. But he is from Bersatu, the party which is not very strong. <laughs> PKR is quite strong. Uh, uh, and then of course, uh, the, the people in DAP will be very happy with him for that kind of statement. But uh, he should not have made that statement. And I, I felt bad when he said, yeah, he should, should go home, he should send him home. Anyway, sorry, uh, please continue, Dr. Daniel. Uh, yes, I think this is, uh, I think, an opportunity for us to uh, go beyond the philosopher's right. civilization, yeah. actually implement it and yeah, yeah. develop something. If we can, if, with your, you know, there and uh, uh, with, with uh, Sai Sadiq, if you can have a foothold in the ministry, then it will be beyond, you have to think beyond that study. Because as a politician, you are ups and downs. One day you are popular, the next day you will be hated. Right? And since he's young, difficult to tell what's going to happen to him. So, but if you have a grounding in the ministry, then that link can be maintained and strengthened from time to time. Inshallah. Yeah? We'll, we'll try. Okay. Good. Thank you. Okay, uh, next please. Sorry, Rosaliza. Doctor, Rosaliza. Yeah. Doctor of Science, Department of Chemistry. You, uh, you are in Kuantan also. Yes. Oh. So, uh, no, do you know her? Chemistry. Just today. <laughs> just ah, today. I'm sure Doctor Norris is also has a <laughs> chemistry right. background. Uh -huh. So you have. You have a good chemistry. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes doctor. Uh, uh, I was appointed as the IOSK coordinator for Kolia uh, hmm. early this year. Oh, early this year. Facing uh, Dr. Ibrahim Shoga because he was uh, Ibrahim Shoga. Uh, yes. Appointed as the head of 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 the head yeah. So the first time it was not easy for me to accept because I don't have, I don't have the Islamic background uh -huh. to compare with Dr. Ibrahim. Yeah, yeah. But then maybe I'm committed since uh, 2011 with him. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. In Pula of Science, uh, we call the Islamic, the IOSK, we call it. FORST, F-O-R-S-T, Forum of Religious and Scientific Discourse. Mm -hmm. And I think last time in a class, they call it Asada, right? Forum of... F-O-R? R-S-T. F-O-R-S? D. D, yeah? Yeah. Forum for... Uh, of? Uh, religious and religious Scientific and Discourse. Discourse. Oh, okay. How often do you have this forum? Forum uh, once in a year, but once. the talk is uh, every month. Oh, I see. Uh, so the main activity is talk every mm. month. Mm. So basically, uh, depends and based on the Islamic event, 
um, at this Islamic Iraj, and then um, okay. kita lari to Padar, lari to Mak Hijra, and then so, so for event in Mak Hijra, uh, we conduct a toko for Mak Hijra for kuliah. So we have uh, um, toko Mak Hijra for academic staff and then for laboratory staff. Mm. Okay. And then for talk, we have two two types. We have a religious talk and then scientific talk. So sometimes we call the Ustaz from outside UAE and sometimes when we did the uh, quantum campus like CAS and COM. Um, and then we also conduct uh, forum last time, safety talk uh, with the OSB. Um, then we also have uh, conducted the Arabic class once a month. Um, the speaker is a lecturer from mathematics. Dr. Supiyai, who is, um, I think he learned Arabic during his PhD at Japan. No, sir. Dr. Mathematic at Arabic, okay. Japan. Japan. Oh, Japan, that's all. Basic Arabic. Oh. Okay. And then we also, um, during Ramadan, we also have a uh, talk. I think for Ramadan we have four talks um, for diet, diet during Ramadan and then the uh, Quran, the Tukata and Kamu is two under scientific I can move. That diet and I can move. And then um, what else? What else? Uh, uh, for the Ma'an Jirah, uh, um, the mechanism is to vote from the, among the Kuliah staff. What about um, the intellectual side of it? Um, I, I mean, um, are there people looking closely at the philosophical uh, assumptions of contemporary <coughs> science? You know, for instance, there's such a thing as a philosophy of physics, mm -hmm. philosophy of chemistry, mm -hmm. philosophy of biology. <coughs> so the philosophical groundings of all these disciplines but not enough people are working on that because people are prefer to work above the ground, not underground. Philosophy is somewhere underground. Uh, but the philosophical roots are very, very important because uh, some of the problems have to, to do with the roots. So how can we, you know, we make sure that uh, the secular humanistic, naturalistic philosophy of modern science could be critiqued and then you suggest, let's say, uh, a Tawhidic science to be another alternative. Because again, as in economics, I see 2050, beyond that, Islamic economics will be mainstream. They will be the model for the world to follow. Similarly, Tawhidic science Maybe it will take a longer time than 2050, but uh, when all the technological and scientific crises um, come to a big end, uh, then maybe humanity will be looking for another alternative. Uh, so, uh, is anybody in the Kuli of Science looking at this aspect, the philosophical roots of modern science? I think we have to rise up. Abdul Raza. Yes. Uh, but he's not from science. Yes. I would like people from science yes. themselves. Hard to see. I just wonder why do you keep on referring to 2050? Is there any significance? 2050. Yeah. Because that's the most people, most futurists uh, use 2050 as the limit for this. But that would be half of the century. Half of the 21st century. Uh, most people stop at 2050. Even the Malaysian uh, Academy of Science projection stop at 250. But I go beyond to 2077. Okay. <laughs> why 2077? <laughs> that is the beginning of the 16th century Hijriya. Okay. November 17, 2077 will be uh, our Muharram of uh, 14, uh, 
one times zero is zero. So your your children will be around. My grandchildren will, inshallah, be around. Your grandchildren also. But what kind of world do we want them to be in? <coughs> to zero seven seven. So I divide uh, the future into three parts. Two zero. 2030, that's one decade. That's the first phase for Islamization. Second phase will be 2030, 2050, another two decades. That will be phase number two. The third phase will be 2050, three decades, 2080. So we have to plan from today for what our grandchildren is going to see, inshallah, by 2077. But you look at the rest of the world, they stop at 2050. Okay? So, but to me, because 2050, you're entering the third phase of Islamization of the world. Okay? The third phase. And that by that phase, we are going to be mainstream. Okay. Islamic education is going to be mainstream. Because the world be already they have exhausted the philosophy of education. Now it's time to go back to the Tawhidic integrated holistic education based on the epistemology of Tawhid not epistemology, of social constructivism. So, um, that explains. So yeah. basically, you're also in the psyche of uh, understanding the end of days, it seems, because after the rise of Islam, it's... Yeah, but I don't want to go into that end of days mindset, because we leave Allah will take care of that. But we have to plan our part. Because I go on the basis of this hadith. Even if you know the end of the world is going to come, if you have a seed in your hands, plant it. So I take this optimistic perspective. It's our duty is to plant. What's going to happen to the world, Allah will take care. Allah is not going to let this world just, you know, drift uh, the way Stephen Hawking sees it. Because for Stephen Hawking, it's just one planet among billions and billions of galaxies. So, because it's so small, it's not significant. But from an Islamic point of view, the Earth may be small, but it's very, very significant. This is the, the, the atom of the universe which has Nubuwa in it, and has Khilafa in it, or Budiya in it. You know. And Allah has his friend in this small atom. Al-Khalil, Ibrahim, is Allah's friend. And Allah has beloved in his small atom called Muhammad So, um, so small size does not necessarily mean insignificant. But the scientists are thinking in terms of size. So for them, just because we're just a small atom, we cannot be important. But there are bigger, bigger, bigger planets, even in the same galaxy. You know, we are in the Milky Way galaxy. But there are millions of galaxies. So then you must be very insignificant. We just another atom called Stephen Hawking. But Stephen Hawking is thinking of how to how to eternalize himself. So he doesn't die because modern science and technology can take an atom a cell from your body, develop it, preserve it, and maybe marry you with another robot, and then uh, you come up with uh, another being. So you do not die. You go, you keep on transforming into new technological forms. This is, this is Stephen Hawking's imagination, <laughs> or, or uh, science uh, fiction of Stephen Hawking. But atheists are like that. But we are not atheists, so, so to me, uh, 2050, uh, well, I believe it's not going to be the end of the world yet. Because 
you have the small signs of PR, but the big signs are not there yet. The small signs are there, we agree. The Alana to Sa are there. Um, barefooted Bedouins competing with one another to build <coughs> huge, uh, tall uh, buildings. We see that in, in Qatar, uh, yes. UAE, and you know, competing with one another. And Saudi wants to have the tallest one now in, 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 in what? In, in Jeddah. Yeah. It's two miles up, and blah, blah, blah. And so, anyway, so that will leave it to uh, what's his name? Uh, this Imran Hussein. Uh, let him do that. <laughs> that part will leave it to Imran Hussein. Our part, do what we can uh, in spite of all these things. Yeah? Okay, next, uh, sister. Uh, my name is Salwa from Kulian Language and Regiment. Dr. Salwa? Yes. Uh, okay, Dr. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, actually, I'm from Department of Tourism. Uh -huh. But my, my basic background is actually uh, from some education. This is my lecture. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 lecture is <laughs> okay. Now, what do you teach in the Kulian of Language? Uh, we say uh, tourism. Oh, tourism? Mm -hmm. Oh, there is tourism there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, oh. I'm from the Department of Tourism. Oh, okay. So you travel a lot? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you thinking of uh, Islamization of tourism? Yeah, that, that, that's the thing I just want to erase ah, here. Okay. The, the thing is, uh, most of people there, we are joining from different universities where our background is not you Islamization, uh -huh. except me only from... But I'm from education, not really from tourism. So in order for us to actually really implement that thing in our quick and in my department itself, actually I think it's quite difficult when most of people is not clear itself with what Islamization means and how it should be implemented. And sad to say that uh, just for curriculum review, we even remove one uh, Sharia complete subject from the course. Oh. Despite of the main idea is mission Islamization, but yet we even remove that thing and then Why? Like, that because most of the time we are thinking that planning is most more important, recreation more important. So this because, because they're not clear. I, I, I feel that it's my mistake also because I didn't give a clear information about that this subject is important. Where, where is your department? In here or in Pago? Pago, Pago. I'm Pago. Pago. Oh, if you can invite me one day, I don't mind going there. Yeah, inshallah. That's Take good. me as a tourist. <laughs> <laughs> you pay for my passage as yeah. a tourist. <laughs> I will go there. As a inshallah, tourist. It's, it's really great if you can come here, give us a clear information so that even some of them, they, they want, even our head department want. Who is your head of department? Uh, Dr. Mazni. She, she's basically from UNICEL before. Oh, uh, maybe not our them. product. No, 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 not now that except me only, oh, even I'm from right. education. Oh, okay, so okay, people okay. is not clear. They want, but oh. in what way they want to be in this? Thing. But are they aware of the mission of Islamization of IIU? Yeah, they're aware about that thing. Uh -huh. But in order to implement, they think it's enough for one subject. I do oh, teach one subject, oh, Islam, okay. Islamic perspective of tourism. Okay. They think that by putting one subject, Islamic perspective, or oh, is enough, we already mm -hmm. have. Yeah. But yeah, I think one. And then the rest is not talking at all about Islamic. Oh, so I think, sad, really sad. Yeah, yeah. The thing is, I it's think It's opportunity that, lost. Yeah, that, I think that... Because that, this is da'wah also for Islam. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then I think, bro, I think that what makes our uh, graduate different from other tourism yeah, yeah. is that really oh, But the thing, we didn't even teach that. Yeah, yeah, there's some people are working on that thing. But it is in that in heart more It's just your head, we have to work on the head. The head of the department. It's coming from that background. We understand. But she, she she's trying, but the thing is, in what way? They think by putting one subject, I think it's enough. Mm. I think because when I learn in education, I still remember each of courses we must have one slot, what Islamic, yeah. whatever educational psychology, yeah, yeah, yeah. sociology. Yeah, yeah. But yet here, mm. the thing is, one one course enough to cover everything. I think 
then what makes you different with that yeah, yeah, product? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah. Why do you this have is a decision of the of the authority there? Yeah, the the the, 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 the HOD is someone from the RDC. She's trying, but what we this matter. Has Dr. Shukran uh, gone down to Palmo? Do you know who Dr. Shukran is? Yeah. He's your dean. Dean? Huh? No, our dean is Dr. Azrul Azli. Oh, sorry, sorry. <coughs> it's not Shukran. Mm. Yeah, yeah. it's interesting. Why? Yeah. It's good. But let them pay for it. Yes. <laughs> we will go as tourists, as your guests. Oh, yes. uh, I'm saying maybe centuries, mm -hmm. together with Prof. Amal as our advisor, can go to Pago. Yeah, Expenses well. on Pago. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just put me in a three star hotel, that's good enough. Oh, there's no five star, you will come there. Okay, okay. Okay, good. Even so to the area of science, because I also no have some, no. not much, background of philosophies of science. Maybe we can collaborate. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Maybe we can go there as well. We'll see, okay. Inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, because science and quantum, I'm not worried. Because quantum, I'm not worried. Because you know, there are enough Islamizers there. Uh, but Pago is new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you are just next to Singapore. Uh, and uh, Pago is also having problems because of political changes mm -hmm. uh, and, and being secluded <coughs> so you need always to have this contact with the pusat, mm -hmm. uh, the center the baby has to be contact has to be has to be in contact with the mother mm -hmm. so there has to be an umbilical cord the spiritual umbilical cord between the baby and the mother once you cut that cord, the baby will grow up into a Japanese tourist. Oh. <laughs> to study Arabic. <laughs> study Arabic. Uh, just looking for where to play golf, uh, cheaper than in Tokyo. So yeah, a very a great opportunity and amana in your hands. You cannot let it go like that. So you know, please plan a day. We will go and say, don't worry, we're not going to rock the boat. But we want to understand the situation mm -hmm. and see how we can bring in the Risala, uh, the message of Islam, inshallah. Because again, the future is Islamic tourism. Yeah, 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 yes, bro. We, we do see that thing, yeah. but in order to really implement. Oh, actually, we, have, we also grab that uh, our new team, see Dr. Azul, actually. Dr. Azul. Azul, Azul he actually, he's good in the Islamic background. Where is he coming from? Anybody knows Dr. Azul? Azul, Azul. He's an Ustad. Oh, uh, yeah. Ustad? Yeah, oh, good. Yeah, that's, uh, he's famous with uh, Tadabur Santa. Oh. He's in our TRGS team. Oh, I see. Okay, good. I think we work, we work with him. Oh, yeah. Because the dean can also yeah. impact upon the department. He's normally from IK. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Ask him to invite me and Dr. Jen, now we go there. Inshallah. <coughs> okay. And, um, uh, okay, arrange for me to have also uh, uh, what you call swimming in the sea and snorkeling. Uh, <laughs> snorkeling. <laughs> I will do, you know, honestly, I do Islamic snorkeling. Yes. You know what I mean by Islamic snorkeling? When I go into the sea, I do the dhikr in the sea. Because the fishes come around, I do dhikr with them. In the sea, with the fish coming around. SubhanAllah, this is great. And I do dhikr, really, under, in the sea. Uh, so, then when I am uh, in, in the sky, I, I, I do dhikr in the with the sky. So it is an occasion for the And you see the beauty of Allah's creation, so far. Okay, so I'm on. <laughs> I will bring my my, my, my trunk. Zikr in the sea. How far away are you from the sea? Sea? Yeah. We don't have sea, we have Tanjung from. <laughs> we have to go to the sea also. Just for snorkeling. Where do you do snorkeling in Bago? No, there's no. 
the sense of urgency that that uh, that United Nations uh, is with UNESCO, UD, UNDP, UNIDO, and all that. They, they they really feel really a pressure, and, and time is running out. And many environmentalists believe that we don't have the time. Mm -hmm. So uh, so there should be that sense of. So then the coolie should be feeling we need to provide the alternative to prepare for not just business as usual. So yeah, that but sense I, of urgency. Yeah, I agree with you, Pro. So that's why in teaching the value ethics and built environment, so basically about the sustainability from the Makassib mm. perspective, mm. Sharia perspective, that has been taught to the student. Mm. And then we hope that our students can be the ambassador. Oh. Okay, that, that's the most part that we can do at the moment yeah, okay, yeah. through our students. Okay. Okay, I really emphasize on that topic actually. Okay. So maybe one last point from me, yeah. uh, Prof, is that so um, after 22 years being with CAEC, with my background of Sharia law, so I, I, I devised a module, a training module for the Islamization, so uh, in which I think we should give more emphasis on the way of decision making we make through the usul of faith because we cannot be um, uh, we cannot be focusing on certain on the certain segment only but we have to teach them how to make a decision through a usul of faith that will help them to branch out into their area Okay, be it they are from urban planning, architecture, QS or whatsoever, but they have a basis how to make a decision. And then that will guide them is through usul al fiqh. By usul al fiqh, you are referring to the qawaid fiqhiyya. Qawaid fiqhiyya is the, okay, yeah. Uh, maybe at the conventional kulia at the Ka'ed for example, qawaid fiqhiyya is the most suitable lah. Mm -hmm. I would say because they cannot go into the depth of the yeah. So of course. Yes, yes. Right. Uh, so that that's what we okay. I try to devise that module in which I will take this opportunity to make appointment with you next Friday oh, no. <laughs> to discuss the module. Actually I have the draft. Oh, no. Next Friday. Uh, if you have next time. Friday. I have to yeah, see. We'll so, see. Or maybe I can wait. No, when, when I come for the class. Okay. Then you can come uh, after twelve. Before the Juma. Oh, okay. We can the discuss. Sixth, because on the sixth. Uh, on the sixth. Mm -hmm. Oh, every Friday, Friday. probably. Yeah. Not every Friday, mm -hmm. uh, you know, certain Fridays, but oh. incidentally, the sixth of September, he has a class. Oh, okay, okay. Because I used to meet Prof at Ilim office, I think, just once in <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. discuss about yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then the last point is that also I'm thinking of uh, organizing a MOU with the Fatwa Division of the Pejabat Mufti Selangor and Melaya. At, at the moment, under our TRGS, that is what I did actually, mm -hmm. because we are studying on the uh, we are studying on the how to provide housing on wakaf land, mm -hmm. and then we work also with the zakat institution. Mm -hmm. So there are so uh, there are quite Sharia matters to be resolved. So we work with the Mufti department mm -hmm. through their fatwa division. Mm -hmm. So I think from this experience, I will. Uh, I already proposed to the kuliah that for the kuliah to have a um, MOU with the Mufti Department. Whenever issues on environment, big environment, then that will be channeled into it. Because I don't think that we are able to resolve to that extent. Because even me be there, I'm not able to tackle all the things. So, and that I'm not capable also. Okay? So that's. The two things that's the, uh, about the module and then the MOU with the Fatwa Division at the Mufti Department, Selangor and Wilaya. That is, I would regard as an Islamization uh, movement at Kenya. Okay. I try. Okay, good. Thank, Thank you, Prof. Thank you very much, Dr. Azila. I thought you are the coordinator. Mm -hmm. ah, anyway, good. Uh, you're still there. I thought you were planning to uh, do hijrah. Not successful. Not successful. <laughs> huh? Okay, good. Good for us. <laughs> okay, uh, engineering. Sorry. Okay, we have another 10 to 15 minutes because we have two more. Uh, oh, yeah, three. Okay, five minutes each. Okay, please, uh, doctor.
Islamization, I don't know, uh, there is a sense of saturation and, uh, and uh, people are exhausted of uh, theory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I took over from uh, my uh, colleague, brother, Sheikh uh, Nazizi, I found that he has already some programs like uh, the monthly Teskira for the admin staff. We have, of course, the Ibeda camp, which is now directly under the, uh, under the Islamization uh, coordinator. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, you, you are now the coordinator yeah, for the Kulia. Yeah. Okay, yes. good. Yeah. So, uh, also, there was a quick uh, succession of deans. We had oh. three deans in, oh. uh, in two years. Oh, yeah. Prof. 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 Japanese Prime Minister <laughs> <laughs> resigning yeah. after a yeah. year. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, when uh, the dean comes, of course, he has his yeah, own yeah. vision and so on, so you need to adopt and change uh, certain things. But I can say that uh, there is also uh, a sense of, uh, of uh, strength uh, among the staff. We have Prof. Nani, for example. That She's still there. Uh, she just left. Oh, yeah, this, this semester oh, she retired. Yeah. 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 But probably she would be on part-time basis. She would, yeah. she would teach certain, certain uh, subjects. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, but she, Where is she going? Uh, I think she retired. Just I, don't, like that. Yeah, I don't think that she has uh, any uh, new... Uh, taking care of her mother. Yeah, this is what she says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's taking care of her mother. Oh, boy. 
Yeah, but it is a big loss for me. Uh, yeah, indeed, yeah, it's a big yeah, loss for the yeah, university. For the university. Yeah, yeah. And we thought that she will, that she will stay longer. Yeah. And probably she will be given something else. But, uh, yeah. So the presence of uh, of Professor Nani and other other senior staff, Professor Nawati and mm. others, gave that sense of uh, of strength to the the Kuliya. And uh, most of the staff there have been there for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the concepts of Islamization and are are already uh, digested. Professor Taba is still there. He's still there. Yeah. Still there, but not in good. Uh, good, not good uh, yeah. yeah. So we are continuing what what uh, others have uh, started already. Yeah. So as I said, we have month uh, to the to that new staff. We have the camp. Yeah. Uh, we used also the grant funded by uh, by the uh, Triple IT <coughs> to engage in uh, several uh, research uh, books. Uh, for instance, Professor Nani herself, Prof. Hayrutin, Dr. Azam, Dr. Nick Shabiani, mm -hmm. all completed their, their, their books. So, yeah. They are books for the for the, for the for the for the for the So uh, uh, yeah, we have also summarization of the education which oh, is post okay. uh, compulsory for the compulsory for the well, the new books on Islamization. Uh, yeah. These were just recent, the one that I was talking about. For the moment, is there any other books? No. Uh, we hope, I hope I will share the benefit also from the, from the uh, uh, ideas given by our brothers here. Uh, so we like this, uh, my special gift to the poor students. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, iftar day, which includes all the students. We have iftar day also, but uh, for the staff. Oh, so yeah. probably now we will expand the students as well. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's that's This idea of uh, being a, a Morandi is it now widely shared by people in the Kulia? Uh, officially not, but. Uh, as I said, because the staff uh, were were there for a long time, so they benefited from the what is going on in the in the university in general. So there is an awareness. I didn't feel, for example, there is a need for some staff. We have one or two new staff, but they are the product of the university. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but if if you advise us to uh, to engage in any other form of uh, New initiative that under this more of the concept, so you know, just as a reminder. Yeah, but maybe also this uh, al Akal could also be developed in the department as another uh, platform for yeah. uh, intellectual, uh, intellectual construction or knowledge construction. Yeah, in fact, Prof, when you mentioned about the the talk, uh, cycle to uh, SDG, mm. and you mentioned that uh, Islamic, the, the Islamic discourse is absent. Mm -hmm. I actually put a note mm -hmm. that it could be a good uh, research and research paper mm -hmm. to present the Islamic approach of yeah. towards mm -hmm. the SDG. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay. Uh, brother, uh, last but not least. Uh, my name is Aznan. Uh, Aznan from Korea of ICT. Uh, maybe just to introduce a bit of myself, I'm actually a graduate of IUM. Uh, and my first degree is uh, Islamic Revolution. Oh, uh, in fact, in Korea ICT, we have three graduates from Islamic Revolution. Oh. Uh, oh, what department? Uh, I'm from Fake Soviet. Fake Oh, very okay, good. And uh, they have, we have another brother also from Fake Soviet, and, and uh, the third one is from Korea and your MA is from where? Uh, I did my master's at UITM, right. uh, Information Management. And PhD? Uh, a PhD at uh, University of Malaya, at the Department of Science and Technology Studies. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. OK, good. Uh, so uh, maybe just to share a bit about the SPT. So Alhamdulillah, uh, 
Kulia City is, we can say, the, one of the later generations Kulia that was established. So uh, it was formed from the two departments that was already existing from the MB University, which is Systems and Economics and also Library Science from LATD. So we have the advantage whereby the founding members of the Kulia are, are already existing staff. So the, in terms of the leadership and in terms of building the culture, it uh, was already there from the very beginning. So, uh, and in fact, even for the later generation uh, lecturers, uh, they were also students of this first generation uh, uh, founders of the Bulia. So basically, the mindset and the culture is, uh, alhamdulillah, very well established yeah. in the of ICT. And for those who uh, are coming from other universities, we, we try to bring them in as much as possible. So uh, all our deeds begin from uh, Professor Adam, mm. Dr. Uh, uh, Basli, mm. uh, we have also Prof. Tengkumar uh, Rasembo, mm. and then uh, Prof. Hub. I mean, uh, even though Prof. Hub is uh, originally from Singapore, from the industry, from uh, Nanyang Tech. But he has been Islamized. Yes, yes, uh, he's, he's very much accepted. Uh, and, and he's really into it. Uh, mm. So uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, uh, on that part. Uh, with regards to uh, maybe just a bit on this for uh, information, they have they have Usra yeah, yeah. every Friday. Yeah, I was now it's two hundred and what? What is the number of Usra? Uh, I think it's already two hundred something. Yeah, two hundred something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. very yeah. regular Usra yeah. Friday. Al almost every Friday, uh, uh, Usra Tafsir Al Azhar uh, by Doctor uh, uh, Ibrahim Sa from Department of Persona. Okay, good. Yeah, and apart from that, we also have uh, occasional task here. Mm. And also during Kulia meetings and department meetings also, we will appoint one like <coughs> uh, to give task here during the meetings. Mm. Good, because uh, again, ICT is, is uh, at the forefront. You are at the yeah. cutting edge of yeah. technology. Yes, right. yeah. mm. And uh, now we've been cut up by, <laughs> by technology also. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, ICT from the Islamic perspective would be the alternative. Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. And so, and all, all our club members are, I mean, uh, having that, that idea. Uh, yeah. Good. Uh, so with regards to uh, uh, on the uh, uh, academic side, mm. teaching and learning, so we have one compulsory course called IT and Islam, mm. which is taken by all the student, all undergraduate students. Oh, uh, and also for postgraduate, we have also uh, uh, another compulsory subject, Islamic worldview, IT, and society. Mm. So even for the PhD student, they have to audit that course oh. before they start their research. That's good. Uh, this is the kind of thing that you should, other colleagues can also take advantage. Uh, and Alhamdulillah, uh, we have also managed to come up with a, a few books on Islamization. Uh, and also, uh, others are also uh, coming, inshallah. Even uh, one colleague from who's teaching uh, uh, programming, uh, she came to approach me and saying that she wanted to come up with a, a book on Islamization, uh, a textbook. Yeah. Oh, cool. And we are working closely with Triple IT on, on this. Mm. Uh, because since they are, they are, the office is now in our building. Who? <laughs> oh. uh, Triple IT. The oh, office is in your building? Yeah, yeah. So the office is now back on in, in IE Empro, like previously. So Dr. Jamil's yeah. office is there? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, branch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. is now in, in our building. Oh, okay, good, good. Just like last so time. You don't let Triple I did take over your building. Ah, uh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they just <laughs> They're paying rent, bro. They're paying the rent. Yeah. <laughs> but the history of Triple I did started in, yeah, PJ. in, in PJ yeah, yeah. with an office there. It was controversial in the beginning. I see. Dr. Abdul Hamid decided to bring Triple I there, you know? So people said, what's happening? <laughs> And they were afraid that Triple IT will take over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I still remember the PJ campus. You still remember? Yeah, I, I graduated from PJ campus. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I'm actually the same batch as uh, Hafiz. Oh, my God. Okay, good, good. Okay. Uh, so uh, you, your, 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 your children are actually going to be the leaders in 2077. <laughs> <laughs> with, with, uh, because you cannot predict the future of technology. Okay. It's just beyond prediction. Uh, and we just hope that things will not be for the worse. Yes, right? yeah. Because, you know, the possibilities are mind boggling. You could just install, you know, computer, 
uh, in your body and mm -hmm. that can detect everything, blah, 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 can receive all kinds of things, you know. Imagine if that's going to happen to 050, a child will have all that inside. Who is going to do the sifting you know, of, of all this information, the good and the bad, you know. So it's really mind-boggling. But we hope your Julia will make sure that we are not going to be uh, carried away or put into the black hole of ICT. So we, we, I mean, uh, uh, we, we are looking to how we want to see the, the technology can be directed or developed in, in a way that not only benefit uh, the Muslims, but also but to avoid any problems. How, where, when can we be the producers and not the consumers? Yes, yes, yes. So, yeah, so uh, I mean, uh, leading to that problem, uh, even for uh, research projects, uh, uh, PG uh, uh, research by our masters and PhD students and also by the staff also. Mm -hmm. So quite a number of them also relate to looking into Islamic aspects as well. And also our for our undergraduate students, the student society, mm -hmm. they, I noticed they have one Islamization bureau. Oh. So they do conduct programs like ITAR, like talks oh, okay. among the students. Yeah. So the ICT students. And you have non-Muslims? Uh, at the moment, no. No, okay. Okay, good. Alhamdulillah. Uh, we, we are being uh, enlightened by many good uh, developments in the university. Please keep it up because this is our mission. And the uh, mission of the university, with or without the rector, uh, we have to continue this. Islamization is a mandate from heaven, not from rector. It's a mandate from heaven. We are the Khulafa, we carry the Amana, and we have to do whatever we can. Uh, so we, we see some problems in the Department of Tourism, but inshallah, this can be overcome, inshallah. Uh, so I wish to thank you all uh, for, for coming. Uh, and um, Dr. Noor told me that there's lunch. So, so just take the, the food and bring it over. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we'll let us end with the Tasbih of Farah and Surah Dras. Subhanallah, we have the Shahadu Allah, the 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 Allah,